Kevion, recording I, I, in I, progress. I asked you after the game. You know, you and Caleb seemed. You know, when when Braxton needed to find somebody, you guys came up with with big plays. Looking looking at the film um, on on those plays, what kind of just came open for you guys? How'd you guys find you know time to make plays? Um, good play calling by Corn, Coach Corn, and um, Braxton's really good at scrambling, and we practice a lot with him being that mobile, getting out of the pocket and finding windows for him to make those. So that's really what it was. You know, when he gets out the pocket, we just try to find a window for him to give us the ball. You guys, I asked Raheem, you know, how, how is this group after you know, such a tough loss, obviously, had a chance to win at the end? How's the, how's the group responded to, to the loss this week heading into Richmond? Um, I mean, the only way you can respond is just watch the film, learn from it, and go out there and practice and get ready for Richmond. You know, turn the page and go out there ready to make less mistakes execute better and play as a team. How how excited are you specifically to, you know, get back and play in front of a home crowd and in lane again and you know and then you guys have a bye week and a little bit of a chance to relax and get your legs back on Yeah, it's fun. It's always fun being in lane, you know, being in front of Hokie Nation, some of the best the best fans in the nation. Um just being at home, a little more comfortable, you know, good week of practice and just playing in lane. Say, how's practice going so far this week? And what's the office kind of focusing on in preparation for Richmond? I think practice is going well. You know, we really, like I was saying, turned the page and getting ready for Richmond. And offensively, we just, you know, the goal was just execution. You know, we made some mistakes that day, obviously, but we just focused on executing, you know, and going out there and making plays. Tyler Scott, Sue, Mike Barber. Um, I'm curious, how much has to come off the call sheet offensively? Um, when you lose James, uh, just because, you know, you have good tight ends, but you don't have guys who can do all the different roles he did. I mean, there's plays you call for certain guys, obviously, that fits their play style the best. But, I mean, losing James was very hard, very tough on the team. But, you know, we have a lot of confidence in Drake and Gallo, you know, Blake or Ty to go out there and make plays. And I think they did a great job uh, last week without having James out there. Do you think that the you need to sort of, I don't know, reshape the offense a little bit without him? Just, again, because his skill set was very unusual. I don't really think we need to reshape the offense. You know, we can still go out there and call the same things. Gallo is a guy who can go out there and play slot, too. Drake, you know, they're all great blockers, just like James, can catch the ball, run the ball. So, I mean, it was just a little adjustment, but those guys are ready, and I think they'll do the job. Thank you. Nathan? Hey, Tavion, can you compare your confidence level this year, particularly in the punt return game to, to last year? I mean, I had some of the coaches that kind of talk about not having a spring practice last year and a, a kind of an amended fall practice and how that kind of affected your confidence. And it looks like you're playing with a lot more confidence. This year. Yeah, you know, COVID was hard on everybody, and I didn't get that proper off season, And my confidence was a little shooken after those couple drops. But, you know, my goal was just learning from that, you know, having the actual full off season this past off season, catching a lot of punts, you know, talking to Coach Sheebus, Coach Williams, Fu. And I just went out there and started playing like myself, like I did when I was a freshman. Where where do you think you are in your growth as a wide receiver? I mean, Coach uh, Fuente was talking yesterday about how you came in as a as a quarterback and you're kind of learning the position. Where where do you think you are right now as a wide receiver? I think I've done pretty well, you know, especially what they've asked of me. Um, from Coach Williams to Coach Fu. You know, it's always more to learn. I'm still learning every day from even older guys, from younger guys. You know, we could all take some from each other's game. But, you know, each year I think I've gotten better. You know, certain things that after each season he'll particularly tell me to work on, and I do those things. But, you know, it's a constant growth and a constant learning every day. David Teal. Hey, piggybacking on, on Nathan's question, Coach Fuente also said yesterday that you picked things up very quickly, that you didn't look like a former quarterback out there very early on. Did you feel like it came pretty naturally to you, that transition? Um, as far as learning, like being playing quarterback in high school uh, gives you the ability to know what everybody else is doing on the field. So you did have to learn things a lot faster than other positions. So when I got here, I was more just focusing on one position and, you know, not just being able to learn fast, but also applying myself outside of football to learn it. 
And that was the best thing that could have happened for me because I allowed myself to contribute and help this team at an early stage. You said after the game Saturday that there was no doubt in your mind that you caught that ball in the end zone. After looking at the tape, are you even more convinced? Yeah, I saw a different angle of it. And like I said, I, I, I think I caught the ball, but you know, you get some, you don't get some. You can't change it now. So right. you're just looking forward to next week. Thank you.